Welcome to the Russell Hant Show. I'm with Cody Dunlap. He was on Stranded with a Million Dollars, and he won the game. I've been watching Cody on social media, and I know, Cody, that you're a huge Big Brother fan. What's, what got you started in watching reality TV in the first place? No, oh, man. I got Sur- Survivor, the first season of Survivor, you know. And you then watched the very first season? Everything branched out from there. Yeah, it was like five or six, you know. Right. I'm part of that, like, I'm part of that age group, I guess, where I watched it, you know, as a kid and didn't really know what was going on. Right. But, well, I mean, dude, back then, back then the contestants didn't know what was going on either. Now right. when I rewatch the seasons, it's so boring, so. But. Right. Yeah, Survivor is a, a totally different game, but I'm, I'm watching you be very passionate on your tweets about Big Brother. Are you are you really into it? Do you watch? Do you watch the live feeds and everything? This this summer I am um, because after experiencing getting on a TV show, right. which I don't like to compare Stranded to other shows because it's so unique, man. Like everyone wants to compare it to Survivor, but it's like it's nothing like that at all. But it it is a TV show that's edited into episodes, and after I saw how different the episodes are. And how much they take out and how much they switch things and make it look different ways, you know. Um, It's amazing how different it is. So with Big Brother, it's awesome because it's the only show out there where if you have the time, which right now I'm a college student, so I have a lot of free time, you can actually watch it 24-7. So you you don't have to worry about the producer's edit in the episodes who they turn into the villain or who they turn into the good guy you can see it yourself 24 7 and then make your own decisions on how you feel about these people right and what what i want to do is i want to start from the very beginning when you started watching this season when you looked at you know their profiles or whatever their pictures before and don't lie before it started who was your (laughs) who was your favorite two before it even kicked off Favorite two, gosh, before I'm to think it back because before before we knew who Paul was, you know, I didn't jump, I didn't jump all over it, like judging them. I knew you had to be patient to an extent, um, but the first the first person I liked was, or you know who I liked? I liked Josh, dude, because really? he seemed like he just didn't give a shit. He didn't give a shit in his pre house interviews, and I was like, oh, this guy doesn't care what people think. He's going to do what he's got to do. Hopefully, he's smart enough to tone it down. And then um, I've been a big fan of Christmas, like, mm-hmm. on Instagram and in CrossFit and stuff. Like, I follow her. I've been following her for, like, four years on Instagram. So when I saw her, I was like, what the hell? Like, how'd she get on the show? And sure enough, it was her. So, I mean, I kind of was rooting for her just because I've you know, I kind of have been following her for a while now in real life. So yeah. I thought it'd be interesting to see what she can do. Cause I know she's a competitor, but like part of the reason why I love these shows is because it doesn't matter if you're a pro athlete, like she's a fitness athlete. It doesn't matter. Like you have to, you have to have the mental, you know, side of it too. So I was like, I know she'll be competitive, so that'll be cool, but it'll be interesting to see how she handles it, you know, socially. But yeah, my favorite. So Josh and Christmas. Yeah, my favorite from the beginning was Kevin. I said Kevin was going to win the game. Yeah. And that looks that looks all right right now. Well, I also said Ramses was going to do well. <laughs> so so there, there you go with uh, that. I mean, and you know, I don't know when you're watching it and we'll try to start from uh, earlier and I know we're going to skip around a little bit uh because, you know, everything's running through your mind right now about Big Brother, but Right off the bat, let's just go ahead and go to the beginning. Right off the bat, Paul comes out, and then for me, I was upset because it doesn't, it's not a pure game. It it immediately, when he walks through that door, it messes up the purity of the game. Now, they've brought people before, and they've, they made it made sense before. Like even in Survivor, they brought back Russell, you know, and Rob. It was almost Russell versus Rob. Yeah, yeah. And and then they brought back, and then they brought back uh, Coach and then uh, Ozzy. So they try to make it make sense. Well, this didn't make any sense because they just brought, you know, bring back the one when they brought my brother to the show, they brought coaches in. So they made that make sense. So all of a sudden they bring Paul in 
and it doesn't make sense. I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm confused. <laughs> Who, I'm waiting for somebody else to come through the door at least, so maybe a rival of his or something, but it was, you know, nothing like that. So do you think that it's unfair for the people that's actually playing now, the, you know, the newbies, do you think it's unfair for them when, when a vet comes into the game like that? Um, I want to say it, it's tough because the, it's obviously the vet has an advantage early, but the, the vet also should have a huge disadvantage. Like Paul, the odds of Paul going through the entire game and these people not like waking up and realizing, oh shit, he's a huge threat. We need mm-hmm. to take him out. Like the odds of that happening are like slim to none. Although this cast has really looked like Paul might potentially just walk all over them, but like, they give them the advantage early, and then the vets are at a disadvantage. You know, honestly, man, there's a lot of variables to it. Like, there's pros and cons in everyone's situation. Right. If I was in the house and they brought a vet in, I would use it to my advantage. And, you know, it all depends on how things develop inside the house. But you got to just treat it as another part of the game. And, I mean, like you were talking about, it, it – at some seasons they bring people back and it doesn't make any sense. Like last season, I felt like the four people they brought back, like some of them didn't really make sense. Like, why are you bringing this combo four back? It wasn't like a clear cut theme where they were coaches or something like right. that. Like how the, it was in 14. Right. Um, and then this season, just Paul um, is kind of strange because it's just him. Right. Um, but I would say, I would say it's gotten to the point with big brother and casting that you kind of have to expect that you have to expect returning house guests or a combo of returning house guests in some form. And you have to treat it as part of the game. Right. So and obviously, obviously do good. You, you got it. Yeah. So it's, uh, you, you think that there could be some advantages and disadvantages at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it doesn't, it's a shame, man. It doesn't seem like anyone's really, looking at it that way you know some people are like you know just being paul's groupies and then you know cody being the one person that was like hated him but it doesn't seem like any of them are using it as a form of like as a tool to use to their advantage like for me personally i'm an alpha type where i'm like an elite competitor and like i walk into the room and everyone's gonna know oh shit that guy's probably good at competition right and i can't really hide that about myself so like for me i'd be like all right i want to keep paul in a little bit because he's a target whereas if i was somebody that was like more average or could just blend into a crowd from a competition standpoint i'd be like paul's a target we need to set the tone that we're going to take out those elite competitors which would it would be a very easy case for somebody like Ramses or, or somebody who's like not a comp beast to walk around with and talk to the majority of the house and be like, hey, look, guys, Paul is extremely good socially. He's good at manipulating people to get his way. He did it all last summer. He's also um, very good at competitions. He knows when to win when he needs to. Like it's it's not hard, man, to talk to people and talk them into wanting to vote Paul out. Right. But um, I think it makes sense, man, for the alphas, like Cody and the athletic guys and Christmas included in that before she broke her foot, to think, okay, Paul's in here. That's good for me early. Let's keep him around. Because, like, dude, if you're a beast in that house and you take out, then all of a sudden you're the – it's it's like um it's like Survivor whenever the individual immunity comes around. Like, if you're the second-best competitor, like – you might want to vote out the best one because then you can win these comps. But right. at the same time, if you vote them out, then all of a sudden you're the top dog and yep. you have the biggest target. Yeah, so that makes sense. It's it's kind of it's kind of weird, man, because Cody was the top competitor and he targeted Paul. So, like, based on the way I I see things, I think Cody should have been people where that wanted to keep Paul, but it was the complete opposite. So. Right. I don't know. It's it's early, and a lot of these people haven't seen the show or studied it as much as they should have. But um, uh, but yeah, I mean, so we're kind of getting their natural reaction rather than their you know game hundred percent right. focus strategy reaction. But. Yeah. So so it started with uh, the. I'm gonna go ahead and 
jot off the people that's been eliminated from the house. Then we'll move on from there. So, so Cameron, I had high hopes for Cameron. I did a podcast with Judd, and he thought that Cameron would be off early. Did you like Cameron in it at any? He brought the, um, you know, nerd strategy type character into the house, which I feel like adds value to the show. I do. You asked earlier about, you know, Paul t- returning house guests being fair or unfair. I don't think that's fair or unfair. I think that's fine. It has pros and cons, but I do think it's incredibly unfair to take somebody through this entire process that goes into getting on a TV show and then sending them home first night because of a lot of crap that was truly out of his control. Right. Um, and you know, production know, knew I mean, production knew that somebody was going to take twenty five thousand dollars. Big Brother does not oh, yeah, give away that kind sure, of money. Sure. You know, Big Brother does not give away that kind of money, and all of a sudden they throw in a <laughs> throwing around twenty five grand the first night. They knew somebody would take it, and they they obvious it's obvious that they wanted Paul in the house, which is whatever. And uh, and Cameron didn't even get a shot to play. It doesn't matter who that first out was going to be. It's it's not fair. So that goes back to my point. I think it's not fair when uh, you bring at any point. It's either all stars or no stars, like my friend Jan- uh, Rachel Riley says. Yeah, I feel, I mean I feel that I feel like I feel like the majority of people feel that way, but for some reason that's never that's usually not how it is, or hardly ever with Big Brother. But I have a question for you about Cameron, man. So. Yeah. If you were in Cameron's shoes, Russell, and in this scenario, I want you to imagine you're like the nerdy type okay. that's like a super fan, real smart. Right. If you're that try, I'll type try. of competitor, yeah. If you're that type of competitor, and you um, you get into the situation he got in, where it was a vote, and you knew your house guest that you just met had to evict you or Christmas. Don't you think you could have made a case like, hey, guys, look at this chick. She's a professional athlete. Definitely. It probably makes sense for us. to. I, I, feel, like he, I feel like he had a chance to play, and instead he was, like, given a lap dance when he should have been making some common sense, you know, real casually stating the obvious, hey, guys, y'all probably are best off and we're all best off if you vote out Christmas. And yeah, that's an if easy. You guys vote it's easy. Victor, that's e- an easy. But why, uh, yeah, he he made a mistake. Like, with that why one. didn't he? Why didn't he do that? You know, like it's unfair. He had to go first night, but at the same time, I feel like he had a pretty easy, you know, pitch to the voters that night. Right. I mean, I would have been like, "Look at her. Are you kidding me?" And and I would have been also. <laughs> I would have been like, "Listen, these challenges are mostly geared towards women." Because it's easier to hold your yep. arm up. It's easier for a woman to balance. It's just geared for, towards women. And look at her. Do you think you're going to outbeat her in challenges? You're not. So she probably needs to go first. It, it would have been an easy discussion. It would have. And I think they made. I think the house made the right choice. Like if I'm a, if I'm voting in that situation, I'll vote out the nerd over the athlete because. I just feel like those nerd types slip by so long and then they end up winning the show so often. But this house wasn't doing it thinking that way. It was kind of like, I don't know what went into it. Probably they just liked Christmas's personality more than um, Cameron's is probably why they voted that way. But I was pretty surprised because I thought that they would vote Christmas out because it's obvious. um, Or no, I thought they would vote out. What what am I trying to say? I'll, I thought Christmas was gone for sure, but I think strategy-wise, I would have done the same thing the house did, but I don't think they did it for the same reason I would have done it. Right. But like, I think Cameron's more of a threat than Christmas, but they're both big threats to me, honestly. Yeah, so. but the easiest to get out at that point in time, the easiest to make a, a argument for would be Christmas. Yeah, that it'd be early easy in to, the game. It'd be, it'd be easy. I mean, I'm someone who I feel like if I was in Christmas issues, I could have easily manipulated the house into voting out Cameron. I feel like if I was either one of them, I would have guaranteed my safety. Right. And I feel like neither of them really did. And, you know, Christmas just happened to get lucky that it wasn't her. But I don't know. That that goes back to, you know, these people not being as, you know, right. I guess sab- big brother savvy or having big brother IQs like how I have. But 
so it's, it's that's frustrating to watch, but at the same time, man, we've had one of the most entertaining starts to Big Brother ever. Right. And if you had all, if you had a, like, Survivor always casts like all super fans, and Big Brother this season and in Over the Top, I think Over the Top they liked it so much that they went for the same mold this season with this season's cast. And you can you can ask Robin about it, but I think they intentionally cast a lot of people that had limited Big Brother knowledge because. The truth is Big Brother rewards people for taking naps 24-7 and just floating to the end. Like if you go in that house and you do absolutely nothing, you're pretty much guaranteed to go extremely far. And then maybe you can wake up from your uh, you know, slumber with five weeks left and do some big moves and then you know, get there with someone who's crappier than you. And that's like the formula for an easy win. Whereas... If you throw people like Cody in there that just never took the time to really study seasons, he's just like, oh, competition, I'm going to win this. You know, I I don't know what it's like to lose. So it's interesting because Big Brother's a game where, like, people should be, everyone should be throwing comps and just chilling and letting people make targets of themselves. But with the way they cast, it, it... they cast a group that's really aggressive early, which is good now. We'll see how it plays out. I, might, I mean, it might lead to a very boring end game with Paul just walking all over people. Right. But these first three weeks have been gold. I mean, well, I, do you I think can't imagine them have gone any better. If, let's say I went into the house and I did just that. I threw comps. I sat around. I didn't do – I did absolutely nothing. Like the worst floater in the world. Do you think that would work for me? Uh, if if your name wasn't Russell Hans and it was just like oh some no guy me from- Russell Hans would that if, work if it for- was Russell yeah it wouldn't man the way you would have to play um, would have to be nowadays man they do it they did multiple battle backs last season and I'm predicting they're gonna do two battle backs this season right so with that in mind you would have to tell yourself look I'm gonna play aggressive and I'm gonna play smart. And you know you're good with loyalty and building relationships, mm-hmm. so you'd be you'd be pretty set. You just have to win a couple comps and cement that those alliances in place. And then if something went wrong, you'd have the battle back. So and then if, you just have to make sure you came up clutch and got back in. But right. so if you, Russell Hans walks, have to play yeah, if Russell Hans walks into that house, you think I need to win the first comp? Yeah, winning would be in your favor. Because right. you can, dude, like people always say, like, you should always throw the first HOH. Or some people are like, you know, like your boy Caleb, like, I'm winning that. You know, I've never thrown anything in my life. But it's like, either way, man, like, there's, if, if you win the first HOH, there's a way to do it the right way right. and a way to do it the wrong way. And basically, all it is, man, is you want to set yourself up to be positioned very well week two where you're not going anywhere week two, and then you can compete again week three. Yes, you Whereas see, Cody put... With me, if I did the... if I, I'm a strategic player, so I'm more of a strategic mind than a physical or social. So for yeah. me to win the first uh, HOH and to be in control of... I think that I can strategically work my way, uh, you know, with that first win for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like you almost can win that first week, uh, build relations because everyone's going to be kissing your ass, and you have a huge advantage in the networking of that. You know, y'all just uh, the group just met each other. Everyone's kissing your ass. It should be very easy for you to uh, connect with every individual in that house, and then solidify a large alliance. Whoever the house wants, be the person that you know nominates the two people the house wants. And then going on into the future, you should set yourself up to be safe for, like, the next few weeks. Um, you know, maybe maybe if it's the right group. Like, I feel like what Cody should have done, like, Cody, he wanted to make a – he wanted to take out Paul, which is, you know, that's, that's what he wanted to do. But he did it the wrong way. And a lot of people are, like, thankful. You know, man, it's sad that Cody is the favorite. It just shows how thirsty the Big Brother fandom is mm-hmm. for somebody who is a competitor. Because Cody, honestly, his gameplay, I would give it like an F. He's aggressive, right. but...
but his his strategy is fucking trash, dude. Right. And what people want to see is they want to see someone who's aggressive, but also good about like you know, like, you know the timing of everything. Yeah. And, and yeah, what Cody should have done if he wanted to take Paul out was get his people the night before he he uh, uses the veto and throws Paul up there or attempts to. He should have got his people together the night before, you know, last minute as possible, and said, "Look, guys." You know, I've talked to everyone in the house. I feel really good about this. I hope you guys have my back, but I wanted to run it by you Definitely. first. Kind of, kind of make them feel like it's their decision too, even though you're going to do it no matter what. Get them pumped about it. Be like, this dude went to – he dominated last season. He had one of the best performances ever. He's good at comps. He's good socially. It's very easy to make the case to vote Paul out. It's not, it doesn't take someone who's elite right. at doing and- this to do that. And then – I, what I would have done is I would have made up a name so that those people that are kind of like new to, you know, I guess more weak minded, it gives them something to get excited about. Right. If you think of a cool name for your alliance and then they're like, oh, shit, I'm part of this alliance. And then they're going to vote to evict Paul. But instead, he just blindsided everyone. And right. when you're <laughs> HOH, your last move is the veto. Once you do the veto, you have no more power for like the next, you know, eight to ten days so you really want to set yourself up so that when you play that veto you're chilling but he set himself up to where he he played that veto and he blew up his own game and now he doesn't i mean from that time on he he had no opportunity to do anything yeah what he should have done was and if he should have done exactly that that way if something does go wrong because you know something could go wrong especially with paul in there he has other people to throw under the bus he has, you know, it's just not his decision only. So Paul would be going after yes. a group of four or five people instead of just one. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and and he also his major his major screw up man was if you win H O H and you're playing Big Brother, don't fucking chill in the H O H room all day with your girlfriend. No. Get out of that room. Make it seem like you're part of the house still. Because what happened the whole first. 10 days of this season was he was isolated in the HOH room and Paul was making friendships with every person in the house. Like, who do you think these people are going to vote with, man? Somebody that they hang out with all day, every day downstairs or somebody that they might see, you know, 15 minutes a day when you go downstairs to eat. Like, it's unbelievable, man. It's truly mind boggling because this dude is, 30, and I could say this about every individual, I could break it down, but let's just go with Cody. He's 32 years old. He doesn't seem to have a very good financial situation. He's got like a broke down truck. He's out mm-hmm. of the military. This is $500,000, Russell. Yeah, like, I know. If, I told, if I told you, hey, Russell, I'm going to give you a test on the history of you know Mexico, and there's going to be 100 questions, and if you get, if you get 90%, I'll give you Five hundred thousand dollars. What would you do? Yeah, like I would study twenty four right? seven. Hell yeah. <laughs> and clearly, and they go. These people haven't studied. It's crazy because they go in there and they immediately think it's a big vacation. They go in there and they get together. They got oh these three God. showmances. They think they're you know on some kind of island drinking margarita while the sun sets. It's this you know they are not literally thinking about the money. I don't think. Legitimately, dude, there's only like, I think Paul is the only person that is truly focused on winning this money and, you know, earning the title of Big Brother winner. Like, at this point in the game, you know, three weeks in, Paul is the only one that has the focus level that you should have. Like, for guys like me and you, we would be fucking laser focused. Focused. And it would be, it would be to the point, Russell, where we, like, me and you, we'd be having to remind ourselves inside our heads, put on that idiot face, like that blank stare, like, oh, this guy's just a dumb, you know, right. dumb idiot from Texas. Because we'd be so focused, you wouldn't want people to see, holy shit, that dude Cody, he's so observant. He's looking around. I'm talking about myself now. Um, but, you know, I, I would have to put on that idiot face constantly because I know I'm so focused inside of my mind right but on the outside i want to just look like some non-threat right. but these people they truly are just learning what big brother is 
they're they've never been thrown into a social situation like this which i know nobody's you can't really prepare for big brother specifically but it just seems like nobody has life experience like like you look at uh josh who's 23 years old that's like an example of the future of america bro like <laughs> he's a 23 year old that acts like right. a five-year-old and, and like I said, when we opened, man, like I've, I've been rooting for him. Like I rooted for him before the show. I, I, he was my favorite going in. But it's like he legitimately acts like a little kid at the candy store that his parents said he wouldn't get him a chocolate bar. And he's like freaking out crying. Like it's unbelievable. Right. It's just it's, it's a little bit frustrating to watch. And I understand, man, that like the way Survivor, I, we can compare it to Survivor because Survivor to me is the complete opposite casting. Nowadays on Survivor, it seems like every single person is like a diehard super fan who has the ultimate strategy. And what that kind of leads to is like constant backstabbing and random, you know, you never know who's going to go home because everyone's always flipping. And then in Big Brother, no one's really playing at all. So I feel like if instead of casting an entire group that doesn't know how to play and casting an entire group that does know how, if you could like make a combination like maybe a third of the house are pole types where they're elite game players and then a third are super fans who are probably gonna make dumb decisions like most of these super fan types do and then uh, the the final third is people like cody who have never seen the show before but they're interesting personalities right whereas i feel, i feel like the cast is made up a hundred percent of people who don't know what they're doing and then you have paul who's one of the best players that we've seen in the past few years. Yeah. So it's like, I just don't like the combo, man. But it's, I, I mean, I'm still, I still love the show, but I just feel like the combo could be like the casting of mix. The mix of the portfolio could be a little bit more balanced. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, I, I want to go ahead and fast forward completely to where now, now we have uh, Cody's in trouble. So Cody's uh, he's on the block, okay. and and then he he has an argument with Josh, and all of a sudden, uh, I mean Josh is coming at him hard, and to me Cody took that really really well because I don't know those are the th the points and times in that house that I would have a rough time with. I I would have to stay focused and not say anything, but. It's like you just said, Josh has a, a, you know, if he's still in, if he, if he's probably still in from the store, but if he, his mama won't buy him any candy, then he gets all pouty. He, he is one way or the other. He is either crying or he's hollering. He's nowhere in between. Yep. He's really I think about emotional. guys like Josh, man. I think about that. And as a fan of the show and as someone who's gone on a show and just fucking dominated, like I did on Stranded, like. I look at people like that and I'm like, um, you know, it's like a shark that smells blood. It's, it's like how I feel. I look at him and I'm like, man, I wish I was fucking in that house right now because I would manipulate the shit out of Josh. I'd manipulate the shit out of Mark. But you know how to manipulate, manipulate Josh? All Tell me if this is if you think this is how you would do it because me being Russell <laughs> okay. and the, my strategic player, this is how I would do it. Josh is he is the perfect guy you can go to and pump up. You tell him how great he is. You tell him, "Hey man, you're doing a great job in this house, man. You're going to do really well." You he's that kind of guy that would suck that up. Do you think that that's how would you do it? <laughs> you know, for sure, for sure. My approach would be very similar. What I would what I would focus on when I'm talking to Josh is I would say Dude, your mom is so proud of you right now. Like right. You made it to day 12. Like, your mom's got to be the most proud mother in the world. And boom, full control. It's like I'm playing with two votes now just because I pumped that one line into him. Right. Now, I haven't seen Josh a ton on the live feeds, man. He seems to, like, disappear from where the crowd is, where the cool kids are, I guess. But mm -hmm. the, the interaction I've seen with him is uh, Dominique has talked to him. But it's more of, like... Dominique like gets off on telling people how they should live their life and mm -hmm. she's like giving him all this advice and stuff and I'm like who cares Dominique like it seems like she's like trying to coach him in life but it's like right. who gives a fuck dude and Just Dominique feel dude, good so that he's friends with you Dominique she had it clear selling 
until she does her little talk shows. She does her little talk shows oh and my she God, outs dude. herself. The dumbest thing ever. She outs herself in her little talk shows. So she is going to go oh. home because she's trying to be entertaining for the cameras. She is going to go home because of her talk shows. You know, it's funny, dude. Like, those talk shows were pissing me off so much that I was like, I'm not watching this. Like I turned it off, wow. and then it turns out that that last talk show where she got where Cody, you know, Cody knows he's going home, so he doesn't give a fuck. So he's like, he'll say whatever. That was the best, like probably the best speech ever because it, it looked so awkward on the live show. I had to go back and rewatch it, but it was just like Dominique, what are you doing? Like, it's like she convinced herself, like this is my tryout. Like I can, I can be the next talk show host on TV if I just do these segments and they're really good. Right, and it's right. like, Dominique, you're playing Big Brother. Like, focus on playing Big Brother. If you want to do the talk show to like make people like like you as a person and have fun and be goofy with them, do that. But like the questions she asks, man, rub people the wrong way. Right. And it's she's Dominique, trying to be man, Dominique. So- it's trying to do. Uh, Let's talk with Dominique on CBS. No, Dominique, it's I not going to happen. It's corny. <laughs> it's corny. But um, it's, she's so interesting to me, man, because I think out of everyone in the house, you know, aside from Paul, because, I mean, Paul, he's annoying the hell out of me. Like, trust me, but I, I do see that he's by far the best game player. Mm-hmm. But Dominique, to me, um, she is the best in the entire house at observing people and reading, like, where their minds are at. And like, right. she but she says it out loud. She knows. But yes, but I was going to get to that. She's the worst about being aware how others observe her. So she's really good at seeing what, like if there was a twin twist, she would be the one that identifies it because she's so smart like that. However, she's not smart in the way that she like, like you said, she just doesn't stop talking game. And she like, she needs to learn how to disguise herself as an idiot when she's playing Big Brother. You know, in life, it doesn't really matter. But, like, she just constantly talks scamming. Mean, like, there's really nothing wrong with it in real life. But in the Big Brother house, like, that's so detrimental. And, I mean, I tweeted it um, <clears throat> I tweeted it two weeks ago. I said, Dominique will be out. She'll be targeted at week three to five. They'll like her now. They'll think she's a great game player. And then they'll be like, oh, crap this chick is too heavy into the game and dude dominique has the craziest fans on twitter they're all like oh you just hate her because you know you just hate her and i'm like no i'm telling you how it is and sure enough bro week three boom she's in trouble right now so i just i just throw back on my twitter and tell all those trolls like i told you so (laughs) man like your girl's in trouble and it sucks because she had she is she's somebody who i was talking to you about this like i feel like my strength as a, somebody in a reality competition show, is I have a large bag of tricks, but I know when to use each one. I know how to manage my skill set. Whereas Dominique has a, a super impressive skill set, but she doesn't know how to manage those skills. And it actually has worked against her, right. you know, this yeah. season. I thought Dominique was going to be top five, man, until, until <laughs> recently. I'm like, what is she doing? Like, you are literally, she is literally just calling, you know, calling herself out. It sucks, dude. It's bizarre, man. man, people, you got to watch out when you play games like that because one sentence can fuck up your entire game. One sentence. (laughs) You have to be completely ready to play, like you said. You have to be focused. You cannot make a mistake. You cannot trip. You have to stay focused the entire game. And she's she's lost focus. And I know it's hard. It's being in a house for three months with the same people and you can't go anywhere. That has to be extremely difficult. But if you're not ready for it, you shouldn't be in that house. And it seems like nobody but Paul is ready. It sucks, dude. I mean, it put, uh, we potentially could see it. Like, the, these first three weeks, man couldn't have gone better like it's been awesome like the first week and this week specifically first and third week have been just awesome feeds but i really can see this season obviously cody's going to come back with the battle bag i mean i'm almost i'd be shocked if cody didn't because i think they'll give him comps that he'll for sure win but this season has potential man for like the last seven weeks to just be paul walking all over people which 
isn't really going to be entertaining. It's it's bizarre, man. It's, it's we'll see how it works out, though. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm really I'm staying optimistic about Cody's return. So right. this hopefully, is, uh, this is this here. <laughs> we're doing this right now on on Saturday. Tomorrow, are they doing the HOH? Because we'll talk about it. Because we know what happens. I mean, not the HOH. The uh, <clears throat> what? It, what am I thinking of here? So here's where I'm at, dude. Uh, Dominique. Okay, so what? Alex won HOH. She nominated okay. Dominique, and she nominated Jessica. Jason, aka Whistle Nut, has won the POV, and he's going to use it on Jessica. Now Alex is just throwing somebody up there so that the house will vote out dominique so that that's going to make dominique the fourth person in the battle back um and it sounds like she, she might throw raven up there or she might throw mark either way man well this there's almost when this no what i'm trying to say is this is gonna uh we're gonna air this after sunday so we'll they'll know what's up sunday you see what i'm saying yeah. Like whoever's listening to this knows what happens. So I, uh, what I'm hearing is going to happen is uh, Christmas and uh, Dominique, right, are going to be on the block? Uh, you know, Christmas, was, her name was thrown around, but I think um, there, and I haven't been able to lock, and watch we may the be wrong. today because I'm about we to might, leave. You know. it, I mean, you could throw Christmas's name in there, but I think it's going to be Raven or Mark. Um, but maybe – I think it's going to be Raven or Mark, man, because the target's Dom, and um, some people would vote Christmas out over Dom. So they're trying to throw someone up there that's not going to get any votes is all that's happening. Right. I mean, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, anything can happen. But it sounds like Dominique has not played a very good game, um, like, as somebody on the block. Like, there's different – so when you're – studying to be on big brother you got to study every position like how am i going to act if i'm backdoored if i'm thrown on the block how am i going to act if i'm put on the block exactly and it sounds like dominique is she's playing horribly uh for she obviously didn't prepare to ever go on the block because she's not making a good case for herself why she should stay no i think Um, she's going home yeah i should go into the battle back so Maybe she can beat Cody in the battle back. We'll see. So how come you, know, you never Kevin, know? How come Kevin and Christmas voted for Ramses? Let's talk about that for a well, second. Well, uh, I don't know if you saw uh, Christmas's vote, but uh, she was she was uh, drugged up pretty good, man. I mean, she wasn't she wasn't really all there, bro. Like the the uh, the quote that she had was like Julie was like, "How are you doing, Christmas?" And Christmas was like, "Oh, good. It's getting better every minute." <laughs> And it's like, what? She said something about minutes that was just like, what? <laughs> and, um, you know, so who knows why Christmas voted the way she was. Dude, she's playing Big Brother, and she's not in the house. She's at a hospital, right. bro. Like well, she's back Russell, now. When I, yeah. when I'm, yeah, she's in there now. But whenever I miss 24 hours of feeds, I feel like I missed, like, a whole month. Like, when I go back on, I'm like, what the hell? Like, this person's working with this. Everything changes so fast. So for her to be gone for, like, a full day, it's like she's got to walk back into the house and, like, have to figure out what the hell she missed. Right. And, like, she, she's not allowed – I'm assuming she's not allowed to watch the feed or anything like that. I, I would hope, you know, maybe she, she might – they might be letting her, but they'll say they're not. But it, it's just crazy, man. That's a crazy situation. Yeah. Um, who else do you ask about? Ke- why did Kevin? Okay. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin, dude – I'm pre- I'm convinced everybody's saying like Kevin is an is like they're not saying he's an idiot like he's dumb but they're saying like he doesn't understand the rules of Big Brother like some people um, they hear him say like H O V instead of like H O H or like when he when he acted shocked shocked that um, if you get physical you get kicked out yeah that's like but me like saying when I, what, uh, does a does a flush beat a straight when I'm sick, sitting at the poker table yeah <laughs> but the thing is Russell. Like, if you said that at the poker table, you would just be hustling the people that you're playing against. I right. think Kevin's saying those things so that they think, oh, he's just a funny old man. He doesn't really know what's going on with Big Brother. He's probably never watched the show type thing. I think he's smart enough to throw those in there because he's not stupid, man. Like, he won- he knows if you punch somebody, you're getting kicked out. Like so, But some viewers think that he's actually unaware of the rules, whereas I know he's aware of the rules. But he has made a couple rookie mistakes, and um, and 
I feel like I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to judge him too hard. But okay, so I guess let me put it like this: him throwing that vote isn't a bad move. Paul actually told him to do it. Mm-hmm. The thing that was bad was he went around telling people, kind of hinting at that. I think someone's going to throw a vote, you know. And right. it's like, dude, don't say that. Like, do it. Just let it um, happen. And yeah. then another rookie mistake he's made, and I'm sure I haven't caught all his rookie mistakes, but like, he seems like he's playing a really smart game, but he's making a few rookie mistakes here and there where I'm just like, man, Kevin, clean that up, bro, because that's mm-hmm. going to bite you. Like, him telling Paul that he took the 25000 Like, Paul is going to use that later in the game. Right. And it probably, it probably it might end Kevin's game, depending on how Paul reveals that. Um, one thing that is super important to note about those votes, though, is when Chris, I don't know if you know this, but when Christmas came back into the house, they were like, we don't know who else voted for Ramsey's or whatever they were saying. And she was like, oh, well, um, CBS forgot to hang up on me. So I heard that Kevin voted for him. I know it was Kevin. So Christmas got to hear everybody's vote, bro. Oh, shoot. Wow. I didn't know that. I don't know. Did you know that? No, I didn't so know that. So she knows who everyone voted for. So she was like, Wait yo, second. guys, so I So she's sitting in a hospital bed, and CBS didn't hang up on the on the phone while they were saying <laughs> yes, their votes. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, this shit is so sloppy, and it's hilarious because— What if she I'm was sure actually I'm, watching the show? I mean, dude, she could have been. She could have easily— Like, we don't know what extent they're, you know, the producers are on, like— they can do whatever they want. You know that. I right. mean, we know that being on TV before. They could easily hook her up. They could be coaching her, Russell. They could be right. saying, damn, these players suck except for Paul. We not. need Christmas. I hope to think I would hope. I would hope not, bro. But trust me, worse things have happened on TV shows. And that's, I'm well, just dude, saying, I can that's tell you a right possibility. Now. I can tell you right now, my experience, I don't know your experience with, with MTV, but my experience with CBS and Survivor, especially because I don't know Big Brother, I can't speak for their production team. But Survivor's production team, man, they're the real deal. They don't, they don't do any like they try to keep everything. They have handlers. They stay with the, the handlers. Stay with each individual person. They make sure nobody's talking when the cameras yeah, yeah. aren't. Yeah, okay. You know when the cameras aren't rolling. Well, look, they they don't want any cheats. I mean, yeah, that's Mark so Burnett. That's, how, that's, that's what they try is. to do. You know. That, that's how it is with me too, Russell, but you can't sit here, bro, and tell me you know what happened between every individual conversation no, that a producer think, had with another contestant. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, know what I'm you can have some rogue people. You can have that easily. That you know that happens. They have bad producers and bad executive producers, but ultimately they want a fair show. I really believe that. But the thing is when she's in a hospital bed – and then all of a sudden, you have nurses coming in that loves the show. You don't think they're going to tell her something? Hell yeah. I would. If I was the nurse, I'd say Christmas. Yeah, dude. I'd say Christmas. It's crazy. Watch your back for this person. You know, do this. It, they, you don't have people that work for their production company that are nurses and doctors. You know, she can easily – she's a very charming girl. <laughs> she can easily get a male doctor – a male nurse to tell her – uh, you know, who's coming after and who voted for who or what's really going on in the game. That's a huge advantage leaving that game if you're someone like Christmas and going back in the house, you know. I, I, you know, man, I think, it, I think it goes back to those pros and cons where it's a huge disadvantage in some ways and it's a huge advantage in some ways. And I don't it's all know about with her, making. man. I, you know why I don't know, think so? The same reason – you, I see, I see you tweet, and you think that Christmas and Paul have it made. Now, I think that that's a possibility, and I think that's why she had it made going out the game because Paul had her back. He has her back in the game while while okay, she's yeah. gone. You know. Yeah. So ch- check this one out, dude. If a random, like, think of the most irrelevant uh, cast member on the season, maybe Jillian, even though she's already out. Dude, if a Jillian uh, had broken her foot. Right. Yeah, what I don't would know. CBS have done? They, she, I they, think they would have just the let her walk. Yeah, she'd have been out. I think the game. they would have been like, "Sorry, you're out." But since it's Christmas, who has five hundred thousand Instagram followers, and she's working with Paul, and she's definitely one of the more interesting characters. You know what I mean? So it's different, but no, I agree with that. Yeah, and I mean, I don't. Yeah, so that's an interesting thing to think about too, but. I think there's pros and cons, man, because a lot of people were pissed off that she got to leave. And it's funny, dude, because 
they're not thinking the way they should be thinking. They're not thinking about winning Big Brother. They're just thinking, oh, man, I'm jealous that she got to go outside and see the world for, like, 12 right. hours. Right. Even though she broke her foot and lost her whole career because she needs her foot to do the things she does in real life. Right. They're just thinking, oh, she got to go outside for 12 hours. It makes them not like her, you know, for a couple of days, and then hopefully they'll get past it. But it's just interesting, man, how people's minds work when they're just, you know, I guess their head's not in the game and they're just there for the experience. Yeah. Like, little things like that are a big deal. Whereas with people like me and you, man, like, if we're in that house, we wouldn't have cared. We'd be like, oh, Christmas left. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to uh, tell Christmas a lie about how people were talking crap about her while she was gone. Or maybe this is an opportunity for me to talk crap about her while she's gone. Right. You know, whatever. We would be spinning it into how does this relate to the game. Whereas the house guests are thinking, oh, man, I'm jealous. She's spent like three days right. outside of the house. Yeah. Like, they get jealous and they want to vote her out, but... Well, it's this next man, it's super this, interesting. This next vote out is going to be extremely interesting for me because now we have a battle back into the game. We have Cameron, we have uh, Josh, who else? Julian, and then whoever this next person is. Now, Dom. I hope that it's not uh, Jessica. I hope it is Dom. And if it is, if it's Dominique, then guess who's going to come back in the game and then get right back into a showman's. Cody is going <laughs> to... Dude, let's hope, let's right, right, look, not, look. bro. Co if Cody... Which he has the strongest uh, possibility to come back into game. Now, I talked about this uh, with someone recently. And the, uh, the temptation thing, what I think is going to happen, uh, which she said it. Megan actually was telling me this. I was doing a show with her. And then she's, she's like... She, yeah, well, she's like, she's like, well, you know what's, what could happen is that... Uh, they're going to have a temptation and they're going to say, if you choose this, which they're always going to choose the temptation, then they're going to have a battle back. Oh, into yeah, the then you, you're going to be able to control something with the battle back. It's going to have something to do with that. Now, I want to I want to throw this out there and I'm going to go out on the line and say this. Now, I think Cody is going to win the battle back, come back into the game. And him and Jessica is going to be right where they belong. He's going He may win HOH. Then all hell is going to break loose up in that house. But, but oh, I hope he wins the H O H. But oh yeah, I do, and I do want him to win it. But if thinking about this for a second, if Cameron wins the battle back and comes back into the game, Cameron, oh, I'll be is, happy for him. Cameron is in a spot immediately to win that game, and and doesn't even know it yet. It depends. Now, now, they could is, use, it depends on a lot of things. Yeah, this is this is the the thing. Now, Paul is in control of that house easily. Tell me the team, tell me the group of people that can get him out or that will, uh, you know, that have the ability and that have the balls to get him out of that house. Tell me the the who do you think is left in there that would go after Paul? Obviously, Cody. Uh, obviously, if Jessica won, she, Target would be on Paul. Okay, so this is a hard this is a hard question to answer because so far Paul has been safe, right? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to look at the house and say nobody has the balls to go after Paul. However, if somebody did, if I was in that house and I wanted to take Paul out, but it was week two yeah, and I, I knew he was safe until thing. week four, right. yeah, you wouldn't be saying a fucking thing, so nobody would know. You would be doing the opposite. You'd be kissing Paul's ass. It's like exactly. how you have to kiss the H's ass. They have to kiss Paul's ass. So, like, you know, I've been critical on this the whole season, but I do have to take a step back and see there's a reason why they're kissing Paul's ass. It's because he's safe. And right. if you rub him the wrong way, there's no benefit to it until week four. So we'll see who wins H the next HOH, and we'll see if they target Paul. But it there has to, it has to come to a point, Russell, where it's so clear that Paul should be targeted that they just start going after him because it's so lopsided. It's not like Paul can't even really deflect his target onto another right. target because there's really no other targets in the house. Like, Cody is a target, but he's just a target because he's like a loose cannon. Right. It's not like he's an elite player. Right. But um, So it's, it's different. I mean, Cody's gameplay level is 
so much lower than Paul. Now Cody has the balls to make moves, which is his Cody's entertainment level is up there with Paul's, but his gameplay level isn't close. So it, it's tough for Paul. To, I okay. mean, Paul's going to be a huge target as soon as that safety what runs out, man. What and about Kevin? What about Kevin and Jason? You don't think they'd go after him because that those two are yeah, like those, a showman's. Those are two that I would say would. Uh, Kevin, Jason, I think Alex would Alex would definitely be down to. Right now, she's Ramses? like close to Paul and stuff. But, uh, would Ramses do Yeah, it? Ramses, Ramses might. Uh, gosh, I don't even con- – I think, yeah, he would. So, you know, the people – essentially the people who aren't in showmances pretty much, you know. Right. Uh, so Paul's kind of in trouble, man. That's a lot of people. Um and then Paul has the two showmances, like, they are his followers. Um, Josh probably would do it, just because I, I feel like Josh is so crazy, he'd want to do something big. And, like, what big move do you really do, other than maybe throw a showmance on the block? That'd right. be kind of a big move. Right. But, like, throwing Paul is the big move. So oh, anyone yeah. who wants to make a splash will do it, so... So I'm I'm looking at my notes right here, and I have to just break. This is completely off the discussion. And my producer is sending me a question. I guess that he was in, he was interested in or wanted me to talk about. And I didn't even know this, but you may. Elena. It says Elena reveals her breast on camera several times on on the live feeds. Is that true? Okay. Yeah. So I I've seen it. I've seen people post it on Twitter like once or twice, and I even made an, I even like retweeted and said, like, how stupid can you be? This is on the internet on, forever now. She's doing it on purpose. It says yeah, here, she's doing she, it on Elena purpose, man. Revealing her breast on camera, so she's just showing them. She. Yeah. So what I I haven't seen that, but I know that's I know that's true because I mean I've seen people talking about it a lot and stuff. Um, this not is a huge a, deal, this is some, you know. Pr- yeah, this is some. Yeah, it, it, it's whatever. I mean, it's, it's her, weird. It's her, and it's her character. It's who she is. You know, if you want to do it, then whatever. But but he got some cool questions here, uh, or some some cool things that happen. But I do. But I, but I will I will say this on that man. A lot of people think like a lot of people would do anything for fame, including like make a sex tape or whatever. Of course. Put themselves out I mean, there look on the internet naked. For, look what it did for Kim Kardashian. It worked for her. But what I want, what I, yeah, we can use her as a reference, but what I want to say is it's not as easy as Kim K has made it look. If it was that easy, bro, everyone would do it and everyone right. would be famous. Right. I'm so, telling you, man, it's not that easy. So, like, she should put, she should put that away. Put that because away. Because that's probably going to do more harm than good for put her in the real world. <laughs> put them things up. So, so they got some not a big deal, you know. They got some questions here or some statements here that I'm a, that I'm going to reveal that's happening on the live feed. That if you're not watching it, you you know just interesting uh, <laughs> interesting facts you might want to know. So uh, Paul brags about how many women he slept with in a year. What well, did did you see that? And I need to know what that number is. I didn't see it. I don't know what the number is. But regardless, if it's five or if it's 500 i feel like that's kind of a weird thing for a grown man to do but i mean it's a weird thing to do and i will also say i think the reason why paul does that is because he brags constantly dude he he'll do humble brags he'll do straightforward ridiculous over the top like cocky brags he just brags and brags and brags and talks about himself and as somebody who watches the show like for the gamesmanship i'm just like paul dude you talking about having the nicest car in L.A.? He has some, like, limited edition car that's the only one in L.A. or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's not good, bro, because if I'm on the jury one day and you told me that story right. and you're sitting up there against go sell your car. somebody, you're sitting up there against somebody like Cody who has a broken down truck, served in the Marines. He's like, oh, he's an mili- ex-military guy and he's broke. 500000 Here you go, Cody. Y'all both played great games, but Paul... You're a millionaire, or you're, right. you know, he's not a millionaire, but his family is very rich, and right. they hook him up with money, which can't blame him for that. But it's, you know, if I'm going to give someone five hundred thousand, that's a pretty serious tiebreaker right there. Right. So you might want to keep hell that on yeah. the DL, Paul. Yeah, hell yeah. So Raven, she reveals that Cody was coming after her before he went after Paul. Jessica. 
completely false, Russell. <laughs> if you're I'm in a, ha- this, if you're in a house, this, this has to be true. My producer sent it to that's me. That's <laughs> I knew you're gonna say that one because that's so stupid. Like, come on, Raven. Wait, like, did, did Raven like, say that though? I don't know. I don't know if it's true or false. Is this? Are these all true? I would uh, assume I, if your producer said them, they're true. Uh, if that's true, that's stupid, man. I hate it when people like build build their own ego by telling lies it's like gotta that. Be true, man. It's like he ain't gonna send me something like that no, he's just making up. But but you know what, man? You know what, man? Some guys are like that though, where they ha- they're not as confident, so they'll go for like the third hottest chick in the room because they right. feel like they feel more confident approaching that. So like it's it's very weird, man. But like there's a science behind approaching tens like i'm dating a 10 like uh, my girlfriend autumn's a 10 i'm gonna marry her hopefully spend some of the stranded earnings on a ring to right. propose to her soon but there's an art to it but these tens aren't approached you can't say that she's much. gonna listen to the show she knows now you just screwed it they're on. not uh, yeah, it'll come maybe it'll be tomorrow maybe it'll be next year i okay. that part out whatever but the point is bro like uh, it's uh, it's shocking man but a lot of these Chicks that are tens, they get approached less mm. than like chicks who are like sevens or eights. Right. So maybe it is true. I don't know how confident Cody is. I mean, I would, I would think he would approach uh, Jessica first and then go to Raven, but maybe he did it the other way. I don't know. Yeah. So jo- you probably heard this one. Uh, uh, Cody was calling out Josh, saying that Josh was, uh, I don't know how he's, you know, uh, being sexual misconduct. And he was looking at them while they were taking showers. He was peeking on them while they were changing, stuff like that. Well, I asked, and I, I asked Megan that was in the house if that was the case, and I'm going to do a show with her, uh, release it in a little bit. Uh, but she said that she didn't see anything uh, that made that seem like it was the case. Did, did you ever see anything on the live feeds that showed, uh, that showed him being a, peeking, a peeping Tom? Well, first of all, uh, Megan's not a very reliable source, in my opinion. But I didn't. I mean, I didn't see it. Maybe it happened because you know I don't. I can only watch one camera at a time, and I don't. You know, I spend a lot of hours watching those feeds, or I have so far at least. Um, but I haven't seen anything like that out of Josh. Um, not saying I want to put it past him. Maybe he would do something like. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know him that well, but. Um, I think when people accuse people of stuff like that, dude, like it better be like clear and obvious. Like it's, it's like in football when someone challenges the play, it's got to be clear and obvious. Like if you're going to accuse someone of looking at chicks in the shower, like a creep or saying a a racial remark, like you better be absolutely sure before you accuse them of something like that. Uh, Yeah. So, Hopefully it was clear, but I didn't see it. So, I mean, I can't really – I would have to see the tape, you know. So so they got some funny stuff on here. It's like – it says, uh, uh, Josh bringing back the term meatball. And he's got – I get he's got his meatball crew. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, was that ever a term? It says bringing it back. Yeah, everybody needs to be like – Bringing back – yeah, I I guess uh, – I guess in – in our producer's world, meatball used to be a term. Well, in I guess it's a term in, in <laughs> if you live in Jersey, you know, if you live in Jersey or something, then it's a term. Oh yeah, you know, maybe it's maybe What's it's up, more meatball? like back of the woods. But he's from I Miami. I think it's hilarious though, dude. That's he's... the type of thing. That's the type of thing, man. Where um, like that's a, that's gold on reality TV. Like if you call someone like how Zach Rance called Nicole a Fruit Loop dingus. Right. Like me and my little brother, man, we think that's hilarious. Like, where the hell did that come from? Right. So, like, we all, I still use the term Fruit Loop Dingus busting fool again. Like, it's hilarious. Right. So, like, meatball, but what I think is a better saying, bro, is victim noises. Like, that shit is hilarious. I, you, I'm starting to call people out for victim noises. Like, anytime I see the opportunity, I think victim noises. Uh, Trump's meatballs, but they're both great sayings, and I think they're both hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and, and this one here, he talks about how the Paul goes into each room eating chips uh, while he's working everyone, and that's you know that is going to get the best of Paul. Paul is playing too hard. He's he's going to every single individual. That is going to catch up on him in the, in a little bit. I promise you. You what you think? 
You know, it's weird, man. I mean, I, I always say, like, I always say that's the, not the right way to win Big Brother, to play that hard. But I think Paul has just made it up in his mind. That's a lot more fun to play, and it takes a lot less discipline. Like, it takes a lot of discipline to tone it down 24-7 and just chill and lay back for the first, you know, the first eight weeks of the game. Because it's the marathon, not a sprint. And I thought that's what Paul was going to do because he did his little Paul morning talk, and he was like, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I was like, okay, smart. But, dude, he's sprinting this, and we'll see how it goes. Um, but I think it's I think it's incredibly stupid, too. But, you know, Paul's got a lot of money in real life. Um, he, he kind of built his yeah. – he built his, it's, it's his fan, you know, he's born into it is what it seems like. And, and he's, it's not like he's like, you know, he's, he's born into money, but he's still working hard. Like he's got right. his own company and stuff like that. So he, he's working, he's working as an entrepreneur too. Um, but I think, so for him, like the money's maybe less and it's more the experience <laughs> is to put on the best performance that he possibly can. Right. And um, there's nothing impressive about a game like that Derek plays. Like, what Derek did was textbook. It was fundamental. Right. It was like Tim Duncan in basketball. It's like perfect. It'll win games. It'll win championships. It's not but that there's exciting. there's no flair to it. Right. And I think, I think Paul, for Paul, winning isn't enough. He wants to win with flair. Exactly. So that's just what, he, that's just what he's doing. I mean, he's but already shown dangerous. us that he's a great game player. That's dangerous, man, yeah, to do that. It's high risk, high reward. So that was his personal choice. I'm sure he made it, and he just flipped the switch, and he's going hard. Yeah. I think he, I think statistically he'd have a higher percent chance of winning if he were to chill. But, I mean, now, dude, it's to the point where he's already gone all in, so he might as well yeah. so just we, keep doing it. And, and if he if he does end up winning this way, it'll be even more impressive. So it'll be, of course, that'll be yeah. cool, you know? So, uh, so we have Kevin. I seen this last night, and I couldn't stop laughing. So you probably seen it and know what I'm about to say. Uh, Christmas is in that little room. She's getting up with her crutches, and it, or, or she needs ah. her crutches. So Kevin got kind of uh, goes behind her, and he has a cold, you know. So he's sniffing and coughing and all that, whatever. And he he goes behind her and he grabs her crutches, and then immediately she's like, "Whoa!" to to Whoa. Kevin, and and Kevin's like. Well, you know, he he goes in there and he and he starts telling. Uh, who is he telling? Uh, shoot, Jason. Yeah, he goes. In the, he goes. In okay, the room, yeah. He goes in the room, starts telling Jason. Hey, man, uh, I went in there. I got her crutches, and I went down to to get her crutches for her, and I sniffed because you know I got a cold, so I sniffed, and she said, "Whoa, I think she thinks I was smelling her butt." <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> no way. And he's like, you think I should tell her something? I don't want her. And Jason's like, no, man, stay away. <laughs> stay away from it. It would be man. more awkward. Stay away from it, It man. would make it even more awkward. Like He's like, oh, I just man. got a cold. I, I don't want her. He's like, he's like, man, that's weird. That's weird. I don't want her to think I'm sniffing her butt. I'm like, I tweeted. That's hilarious, dude. I, I tweeted. That's one it's of those okay, moments. Man. I get it. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those moments that's like, you know, that happens to all of us in our life, but it's just funny to watch people on the live feeds, like, living it out, because it's right. like something that happened that was accidental, but it's, like, super awkward, so you go talk to your friend about it, like, what should I do, and it's like, you can't really do anything, man, like, if you were to bring it up again, it would make it even more weird, right. so, right, it's man, funny, though. I got one last question for you. Uh, which house guest would annoy you the most? Oh my gosh! <laughs> now now I'm seeing question, them and bro. watching them. Uh, definitely Raven, man. What? For sure. Man, I didn't. I didn't Dude, think you would she, say Raven. Wait, well, she before, jumps all over before people, we move on to Raven. She jumps all over every dude. Kisses every dude like on the forehead and cheek. It's just like oh god, over the top. Always like I just can't take it. Like personally, you know, nothing against her. It's, you know. Yeah, but just personally, this, that would annoy me the most. Raven is also note. I need to note this that she knew Paul before the game. Oh started. yes, Good and point. Good I point. heard that they even slept together, had sexual relations. Oh, for which, sure. Did which you... I don't know it to be the case. <laughs> it's just a rumor. But but I this, would... but but you know you got to leave it fair. In fairness, 
uh, you know, he goes to this event. She's a huge Big Brother fan. She sees Paul. She likes him. She sleeps with him. You know, that stuff happens. We're adults. But uh, but they knew each other. She He might be the reason he, that she's on the show. He might have, you know, got her some contacts. Yeah. You know, it's, now she's on the show well, because of that. Well, yeah, you know what, man? I mean, it's like how you talk about your season, whereas you versus Rob, you know, they stuck you with a bunch of haters and they stuck Rob with a bunch of fans. You know, right. this season, clearly, they want Paul to do well. This is the season of Paul. So it would make sense for them to put a big fan of Paul's, you know, in the house with them. But um, early on, man, I, I watched it pretty closely um, because I saw that picture. So I was watching how they interacted. It's hard to tell with Raven, man, because she's all over everyone. Right. Like, she's always sitting in whatever dude's lap that's in the room. And, like, it, it's her personality. To me, it's annoying. Even uh, Josh? It's nothing wrong with it. She even does that with Josh? Uh, I don't know. I think if you go back in the feeds far enough, she probably was doing it, and then she stopped, maybe. She's right. probably toned it down since she's in a showman's now. Right. But she still, she's a, she was all over Paul, dude. But, again, that's how she is with everybody, so I can't really say, like, it wasn't like she was only all over Paul. She's all over, like, everyone, you know, whoever. That's just how she is. But, it, you know, with that picture, it did. You could connect the dots a little bit. But, uh, I mean, me that, we me never know. Picture. Wait, I've never seen picture. it. I've never seen the picture. Tweet it to me. So, And then my whoever's listening, okay, yeah. if they want to see the picture, go to our Twitter page and you can see it. So I, I, wanna, I don't even know what picture you're talking about. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's just them standing together, man. So, like... It could have potentially just been like Paul was doing a meet and greet. <laughs> like right, right. they may not, they may not, they may have spoken like five words to each other. Right, so right, right. Yeah, it's alleged. We're kind of build, We are are building this into a monster, but it, right. <laughs> it potentially could have just been like, oh, I'm a big fan. Oh, nice to meet you. Let's get the picture. Okay, next. You know, right, so right, but. All right, man. I well, I sure appreciate you coming on the show, man. It was fun. I wanna, I wanna uh, come back and do it again later once we get a little deeper in the show. And uh, I appreciate it, man. And good luck in uh, where you headed for the military. Where'd you say you were headed again? Um, okay. going to Romania, Romania. To, to train with my my National Guard unit. So yeah, yeah. good luck in Romania, man. Got and appreciate your service to the country. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Um, I appreciate coming on the show. Thanks for having me. This won't be the last no, that your uh, listeners hear from me. Of course not. And yeah, but producer, thanks a lot. Producers and production listens to this podcast, man. Somebody needs to pick you up. You would be extremely entertaining, either in the Big Brother house or Survivor. Either one. Hey, man, if they want the, if they want the ratings, if they want me to revive the ratings... It's as simple as hitting me up, but right. I'm looking into the international scene, you know. Big yeah. Brother's in, like, 20 <laughs> countries, survivors all over the world. I right. got options, you know. Oh, hell yeah, it, man. There are very few, there's very few people who have the skill set that I have, mm -hmm. so when you're as skilled as me, man, you got options. So I'll be fine either way, but if they want to hit me up, you know, they can get my number from you, so okay, too easy. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show, and I'll talk to you later. All right, keep hope alive. Oh, hell yeah. All right, man, later.